As promised, we are going to start showing more content with Asian fish on the channel. And that will include some underwater footage from habitats, as well as some visits with Medaka breeders. Today I want to show video from a visit to Aquatoto in Gifu, Japan, a public aquarium that has many of Japan's freshwater fish on display. Like me, most of you are likely not familiar with the endemic freshwater fish of Japan, and everyone should see a species or two for the first time. This is the Lake Biwa Wels catfish, smaller than the giant European Wels and much more beautiful. It would actually make a great aquarium fish. This is a mid-sized one, around 30 centimeters or 12 inches. Next trip, I will try to get this fish filmed underwater in its habitat. Japan spans ecoregions from the northern Hokkaido, with weather that is not unlike Canada, to the subtropical region of Okinawa, so there is a huge diversity of trout-like fishes. There are salvelinas, like these small char, but also trout and salmon. This place has an amazing display of the masu trout, and we will try to show them spawning in nature in a future video. There are a lot of loaches in Japan, and relatively few catfish, and they have some amazing diversity and patterns. This nivaela is one of my favorites. We only see the common dojo loach in shops, but there's a huge diversity of these loaches in Asia. The most spectacular barbs in Japan are these longfin zako and candidia, especially in a huge display like this with a large group. In breeding season, these rival some of our native minnows for color, and the long anal fins of the males are really interesting. The same goes for Rincho cypress. These aquariums are around 2 meters, or 7 feet from back to front, and this depth makes the schooling fish really stand out. Something to keep in mind for a barb display or tetra display at home. The large Darkinsia barbs from India would look amazing in this kind of setup as well. Pseudogobio is one of the weirdest fish from Japan. There are actually several species that all look very similar. They remind me of a Corydoras catfish, and they are really fun to watch in nature. Like many Japanese fish, they don't get huge, around 15 centimeters or 6 inches. Pseudraspora pugnax, the fighting minnow, is one of the really endangered fish from Japan mostly because of habitat destruction and their relatively small range. As the name suggests, these are incredibly territorial for a small minnow, quite unusual, and it was described only in 2015, so despite the small size of the country, there still are some fish that are new to science. This huge tank features some of the Lake Biwa fish. First is the barbel, as well as the introduced Silurus asotis or Chinese Wells catfish and there are also Asian grass carp here, and a Carassia species that is incredibly similar to the common goldfish. There are lots of minnows in Japan, and like our native minnows, they are really similar to each other. Many of these are in the genus Squalidus, and I hope I got the ID on these correctly. These are smaller fish that are seen in many lowland habitats. These smaller Squalidus look a lot more like some of the mainland Asian barbs that are in the hobby. The islands have an incredible diversity of gobies, and to me, they're the most interesting group of fish here. Gobies will be the main focus for at least one of the videos. Freshwater, estuarine, and marine habitats all have lots of goby species, and often many different species occur together. We will show some rhinogobias and trident tiger in future videos in their habitat. Of course, they are very outgoing, and the biggest issue I had with them would be they would not come close to me, but got too close to a small video camera left in their territory. Japan has fewer bitterling barbs than China, but they are equally beautiful, and they have several species on display here. These barbs are so interesting because they lay their eggs in a live mussel. We don't really see these kinds of fish often, and for many of these species, it is the first time I saw them alive. Besides the gobies, these were my favorite Japanese fish. There are a lot of these bitterlings, and most Europeans will recognize them because they are similar to the European species. Their breeding biology is really interesting, as is the color on both the Japanese and Chinese species. Sculpins are found in many countries of the Northern Hemisphere, and I actually saw this Japanese sculpin in the habitat of the giant salamander, so we will also show it in the near future. Lefua are very unusual loaches. They look so much like the South American catfish of the genus Ituglanus or Trichomycteris, even behave the same way. I saw this fish underwater, but it was really not keen on being photographed. You see them when you lift a rock, and a second later they are buried under the next one. In another deep tank they have mullets, some minnows and gobies. Many years ago I had brought back some mullets from the Dominican Republic. I found it to be one of the most annoying fish I've ever kept. They basically only begged at the front glass within a week of their arrival. 
and sure enough in this display they have the same behavior. We visited Japan in winter and it's not the best time to see some of the native fish. Next time I want to see the mudskippers in their habitat during breeding season when they have their crazy displays and spend time jumping around. This group of fish is one of the most challenging fish to keep in the aquarium. I think it's just so hard to provide an environment that is as dynamic as the tidal mud flats where they are found. In the estuarine section, the aquarium also showed these beautiful pterapons that reach about 25 centimeters or 10 inches as adults. This is a really unusual fish and kept here in straight freshwater. I think one of the coolest looking estuarine fish I've seen. There are some pteropon in other parts of Asia and they are also interesting aquarium fish. And like drumfish and croakers, they can produce sounds. In Japan, this species, as well as the breams, are grown in aquaculture as they are popular food fish. Perhaps the most interesting predator is Choreoperca. While in Japan there's only one species of these perches, China and Korea have six more. This is a small species that gets only around 12 centimeters or 5 inches and would be a perfect aquarium fish. Like many perches, the males guard eggs and young. Filming these in nature will be a priority for the next trip. They look very much like a dwarf datnoids or Asian leaf fish of the genus Nandus. As a cichlid fan, you have to like these perches. This small aquarium also had an undescribed Kobitus loach, one of a number of Japanese freshwater fish that do not yet have a scientific name. I want to end this video with these Parabotia, the kissing loach. They look a lot more like the tropical loaches from India or Southeast Asia. Loaches are hugely popular in Europe, while we hardly ever see more than two species in shops in North America. Maybe we will have to make a video with some of the rare and unusual loaches in the future. I hope everyone saw a few fish they have not seen before. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to see the upcoming videos with Japanese giant salamanders, plecoglossus trout, many gobies, gobies and more gobies in the coming months.